University of Arizona starting this school year exactly four weeks ago, Scott, and a lot has happened since then. Yeah, since then, cases have gone up and the school has taken drastic steps to try to slow the spread. But is it enough? And what at what point would you, Arizona, put the brakes on in-person learning? Arizona's family is your Arizona school authority. So Kylie went to Tucson to find out and she's got more on that. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Scotty. We're bringing you a series of stories this morning from Arizona School Authority. In the last 10 days, you, Arizona, down in Tucson, they've seen more than 1,300 COVID cases. So we're going to take you inside a lab where they test the wastewater for COVID on campus. We'll also show you a class in the COVID era. But first, we go one on one with the president of the university, where I ask him about the challenges for the rest of the semester and if he thinks they have enough space on campus to isolate students who test positive. College in the COVID era, much quieter, less energy, fewer people milling around, but still more than 4,000 freshmen live on campus in Tucson. It's been different from what I expected. It's weird, but I didn't go to college like when there wasn't a pandemic. Now students can order their meals and pick them up in these special lockers. There's also this robotic salad machine for those who want a healthier option. It's a stark contrast from the bustling student union of the past. You can still walk around campus, you can still come into food courts and grab food and everything, but obviously it would be a lot different without COVID, but they're still accessible, things like this. But the university doesn't want students spending too much time mingling. Last week, U Arizona's president, Robert Robbins, asked those living on or near campus to quarantine for two weeks to help slow the spread. We are living what keeps me up every night. Robin sat down with Arizona's family recently, where he talked about his biggest concerns. In classes and on the campus, I mean, we've got rules. If you're in our building, you have to wear a face covering. If you go right across the street into your high rise, you can go out to the pool and have a party. And we don't have any, our, our rules don't apply over there. And with cases going up, at what point would Robin stop in-person learning? and move everything online. I think for right now, we watch the numbers every day. And so far, uh, we've been able to manage with our capacity for isolation because the, what we're trying to do is find the cases that are asymptomatic uh, and positive. The university says it now has four dorms up and running to isolate students who test positive. So we still have capacity and uh, there are, you know, it's a 10 day isolation. So there are people who've already uh, moved out and opened up new beds for isolation. Currently 5,000 students meet for in-person classes. The university set up these tents around campus so professors can teach outside. Now four weeks into the school year, freshman Jolani Trotman says he'd rather be in wildcat country than home, even if all his classes are online. Well, I wanted to get away from home, kind of have that new experience, and I didn't want to have to wait a year to do that. So I figured I might as well go be a little extra safe and then have that experience. So what do those in-person classes look like in the COVID era? Guys, for the first time, really since the pandemic started, we get inside a class, and I will say it was really interesting to see. This was a unique class to begin with. It was an acting class, but coming up at 8 o'clock, we'll show you the precautions that they're taking. We'll also talk to students about why they think, you know, wearing a mask is actually making them a better actor. So it was definitely unique to get inside a class and kind of see how things are running on a college campus in a classroom in the COVID era. So we'll bring you that in an hour.